Emaine stopped JK Rowling from tweeting for 12 whole days, guys. JK Rowling and Elon Musk have been named in a criminal complaint filed to French authorities over alleged, quote, acts of aggravated cyber harassment. I can't describe the amount of fear I had. I was afraid that I would say, why did Iman uh, Khalif insist on this? Why was there an uproar from big politicians around the world? I was afraid, but thank God I was able to overcome this stage. Thanks to the specialists who helped me overcome this, this stage. The former president of the United States, the richest man in the world, Elon Musk, they talked about you, says the other guy. They talked about you, Elon Musk, Trump, this thing that affected me, I'm not lying to you, it affected me. It affected you. It affected me a lot. It hurt me a lot. She stopped tweeting for like 12 days because she normally tweets every day, doesn't she? Uh, but unfortunately, recently, she started tweeting and she tweeted this. She taught this. It's important to highlight that launching a PR campaign and applying layers of thick makeup requires far more time and effort than simply making DNA test results public. I'm sorry to use this word, but she's so fucking weird. Why is she so obsessed with one person's results on, you know, what fucking chromosomes they have? Why are you so obsessed with me? Even if Amain Khalif did uh, release some sort of fucking paper that said, hey, look, I have XX chromosomes, what would that fucking change in the minds of people like JK Rowling? What would that fucking change? change she's already made up her fucking mind because she has somehow decided that that's the case based on what she thinks a fucking man is in her own little fucking warped brain should move the goalposts as to what a woman supposedly is oh she has xx chromosomes but to jk rowling she looked like a man while she was boxing therefore she must find more reasons that she is a man this is the post that she's talking about JK Rowling's narrative is oh, she'd rather put makeup on than show us that she has XX chromosomes. Like, like what the fuck does it matter? Like, she can do whatever the fuck she wants. She can wear whatever the fuck she wants. I hope that she did that because she wanted to, basically, and not that she felt like she needed to. I don't, I don't feel like women should have to appear feminine in what, you know, the Western ideals of feminine are to be considered as women, you know? I hope that she did that because she wanted to and not because she felt like she was forced to. Because if she felt like she was forced to do that, then that's like, that pisses me off. I hope she didn't do that because she felt like she needed to. Because a lot of women love dressing masculine, me included at times. A lot of women love just wearing baggy shit, baggy clothes and just fucking not giving a shit, not wearing any makeup, nothing, just fuck it, looking as masculine as shit, me included. And if I decided that I wanted to take part in the Olympics one day and people were like, you're a man, I, like, I wouldn't want to sort of like put on this costume of femininity to try and prove to people that I was really a woman. I'd be like, fuck you, I am a woman. I shouldn't have to dress up in a certain way for you to believe that about me. I should just, you know, you should believe what I say I am. Anybody should be able to compete as, you know, the gender that the I AOC says that they should be able to compete as. It's down to the AOC. It's not AOC. It's down to the IOC. I only ever wear makeup when I'm like, you know, record like recording some kind of like content like a video or streaming or going out somewhere. Other than that, mate, I'm bare faced and I fucking love it. And I look masculine as hell a lot of the time <laughs> because like baggy clothes are just really comfortable and great comfy maxing exactly it's the, it's the purest form of misogyny is to to decide that certain people are women and certain people are men because you've decided that they are based on what you see and and what you see is based on your prejudices and your stereotypes that you've built up throughout your life if you're not ready to accept that other things might constitute a woman that come outside of your, you know, expectations of what womanhood is, then that's misogyny, basically. If your view of womanhood is a very sort of narrow 
narrow set of characteristics that's essentially what that's essentially misogyny if you're if your view of womanhood is you know a weak white woman who wears lots of makeup and wears very feminine clothes and feminine makeup it's just a it's just a misogynistic way of looking at women the reason i say that is because like i've looked at Emaine's past photos and like she looks very feminine in that one but like I don't think that's how she normally dresses I mean like look at this I mean she's dressed pretty masculine in a lot of past pictures of her and like I think she looks great I think she looks awesome like that's that's fucking great like she looks hot whoa Brooklyn <laughs> you know in like blazers and, and trousers and stuff and it's great i mean like just like literally do you man just do you i hope that she thrives and um gets through this i just i just honestly i just hate all of this sort of essentialist view of what a woman is supposed to be i hate it because in a lot of ways like i don't represent what a woman is you know is supposed to be I dress quite feminine, I look quite feminine, like you could argue that, but I don't act in many ways that you'd stereotypically expect a woman to act in many contexts. I have a lot of interests that aren't stereotypically, you know, feminine in, in much the same way. Boxing isn't, you know, stereotypically a feminine interest. Just because, you know, JK Rowling's looking at this this woman and going yo she doesn't like to me she doesn't look like a woman like maybe because her fucking because her biceps are a little bit too big for me so like therefore she's a man you know it makes other women look at that and just think like well if you don't think that constitutes a woman what does what about me makes a woman because my interests you know aren't stereotypically feminine so what about me makes me a woman jk rowling's a fucking billionaire that's not stereotypically a feminine thing to be she got hit so hard she didn't know what the hell hit her He's so bad at talking. <laughs> she got hit so hard she didn't know what the hell hit her. I mean, a fist. A fist hit her. The transition. He was a good, he was a good mailboxer. Uh, we actually don't know uh, what her identity is, apart from what she's disclosed as being a woman. Um, we don't know. Well, I mean, the only reason that it's in question is because of the IBA, right? Which is, isn't that, doesn't have like close ties with the Kremlin and they basically, they only said that she might be a man when she be a Russian woman boxer. Oh, if she has an innate variation of sex characteristics, which is also called an intersex variation or a difference of sex development. We, we know that there has been reporting um, really coming from a discredited uh, boxing association that, that, that claims that she has what could be an innate variation of sex characteristics. The debate of Olympic gender eligibility mixes an advancing field of science with one of the most contentious public debates. Policies adapt as quickly as Olympic cycles change leaving future structures and regulation a puzzle. It's difficult, isn't it? Like, is there any restrictions for men in their sports? As a man, can you have too much natural testosterone? I mean, to be honest, like, this is something that I wonder in the long term. I understand why we have women in men's sports now, obviously, because overall, women are like 10 to 15 to 20% slower or less stronger than men in every sport. But over time, what we've seen is is women's personal records and personal bests the gap between the men and the women is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and obviously that's because i think the first year that women were allowed to take part in the olympics was like in the early 1900s women have had less time to like really hone the skills and what they're good at i mean i, I find it a little bit weird still that there's a what's it called when they do 10 sports that like the women do a heptathlon and the men do a decathlon that's the one i'm still like not <sighs> very comfortable with that i get why women only do a heptathlon and men do a decathlon because obviously it's easier to keep things the way that they've always been there's going to be certain records and and things that you know you're gonna have to be and you know there's gonna be female athletes that are only training in seven sports and there's gonna be men athletes that are training in ten sports and to 
all of a sudden change that so it's equal between men and women that's going to affect the women athletes a lot and it's going to put them back a bit when the, that change is made but also the fact that there's a decathlon for men and a heptathlon for women kind of gives the impression that <laughs> women are only capable of like 70 percent of what men are capable of and i guess you have to take into account that it has to be good to watch in the olympics it has to be good to watch and if you were sort of forcing women to do 10 sports all of a sudden when for so many years they were only having to do seven and then all of a sudden they were having to do 10 you know maybe it would be shit to watch because the athletes would be shit <laughs> at those extra sports i get that i get why it's easier to make it to keep it the same as it is but at the same time it's sort of giving off this impression of like women can only do 70 percent of what men do culturally it's giving off that impression over time would women's strength and times in sport actually would it actually catch up with men's i'm not talking anytime soon let me be clear i'm talking over centuries if we like started treating women and men completely equally in society which we are starting to do but we still aren't doing but if we started to do that eventually in sport would women and men start to be giving like uh, similar times in sports w would they be similar in terms of strength and in you know speed when running because we are already getting closer in terms of like personal bests and records and stuff women and men are already getting closer but obviously the men are getting better and the women are getting better so like you know women are down here men are down here and the, the men get better and the women get better and they're sort of getting better but they're getting closer together but obviously the men are getting better at the same time so like the women aren't catching up but eventually would that happen because you know testosterone levels in men are actually going down i think that's pretty much agreed on among the studies that have been taken out like over time testosterone levels have gone down among men and obviously if you're a, like super red pilled right wing dude you're gonna be like that's the worst thing ever Bleh. oh my god testosterone levels. but you have to consider why is that happening maybe it's because societally we don't need it as much humans are massively we're so intelligent we're so intelligent we've got machines to do everything for us now that we used to have to do manually we don't need testosterone as much as we used to we just don't it's just my theory but i think that's why it's going down humans are very good at very quickly evolving themselves into you know the societies that they create in themselves you know natural testosterone goes down over time then eventually there won't be physically that much difference physical difference between you know male and female genders i'm talking about in years like centuries femboy future will we live long enough to find out mm, who knows who knows this is bro science <laughs> this is just me thinking science this is just me thinking it is true you can't deny it it is true that we don't need testosterone in our service-based economy we used to have physical wars with each other we don't anymore now we just have little machines we have drone strikes now guys <laughs> we, <don't. laughs> we have drone strikes that's the real reason for the uh, collapse in masculinity is drone strikes <laughs>